Hey guys, Aunt Becca here today, and I'm gonna read you a story about Abraham Lincoln and the Muddy Pig. This is written by Stefan Krinsky and illustrated by Gresham Griffith. Young Abe was, Lincoln was in a hurry. Most of the time, his days were filled with farm chores or odd jobs, but today was different. Today, he was going to town to give a big speech. Abe liked to make speeches. He hadn't had much schooling, less than a year altogether, but he knew lots of stories. The things I want to know are in books, he said. My best friend is the man who will get me a book I haven't read. Abe also loved to learn to spell big words, even before he had a use for them. He just stored them up like a squirrel, saving nuts for winter. Abe got dressed and gave his thick hair a brushing, and then he straightened up to his full height, six feet four inches in his stocking feet. Abe was hard to miss in a crowd. He called, his father called him the awkwardest fellow that ever stepped over a ten rail fence. Abe patted the sleeve of his new suit, the first one he had ever owned. Mostly he wore a homespun shirt and a pair of buckskin pants. That never quite seemed long enough to catch up with his ankles. Abe had paid for the suit by splitting hundreds of wooden fence rails. Nobody in the county could sp split rails like Abe. He knew just how high to swing the ax and just the right moment to shift his weight for the final blow. Abe was handy with lots of tools. He knew how to hammer and saw and how to cut hay. He could skin the hide of a deer or butcher a hog into a month of meals. But none of that was on his mind as he started out for town. He had his speech to think about. Abe's long strides covered the ground quickly, five or 10 miles with nothing more than a good stroll to him. When he lived in Indiana, he walked nine miles each way to school. Oh my goodness. One day, he walked 34 miles just to hear a lawyer give a speech he was curious about. Abe hoped his audience today would be curious about his words too. As Abe come over the hill, he saw a pig rolling in the mud. The pig was grunting and snorting up a storm. At first, Abe thought the pig was playing. You're having a fine time for yourself, he said. But then he watched more closely. He realized the pig was struggling. I do believe you're stuck, said Abe. The pig only snorted and wriggled some more. Now, Abe didn't like to see any animal suffer. When he was eight, he shot and killed a wild turkey outside his cabin. Seeing that dead bird had left a funny feeling in his stomach. After that, he gave up hunting, and he always spoke right up if anyone was cruel to an animal, even just stepping on an ant. Of course, nobody was planning on stepping on the pig, and its life wasn't in danger either. He just looked scared and alone. I'm sorry, young pig, said Abe, but I cannot come to your rescue. I'm wearing my new suit, and I have to give a speech in less than an hour. Abe stepped around the mud hole and moved on. He tried to put the pig out of his mind. His speech was what mattered. He thought about all the people who would be coming to listen to him. Keep thinking about that speech, he told himself. But it did no good. His thoughts kept returning to that poor little pig. Finally, Abe stopped in his tracks. A pig might not be a person, but it still deserved his help, Abe sighed. <sighs> and returned to the mud hole. The pig was still there. Easy, said Abe. We'll have you out in two shakes. Now, Abe was a champion wrestler. Folks reckoned him maybe be the best wrestler they had ever seen, but the pig didn't know that. 
It didn't realize Abe was only trying to help. So it put up a pretty good fight. By the time Abe freed the pig from the mud, it was hard to tell them apart. Oh man, look at how what his suit looks like. Abe looked down at his muddy suit and shook his head. But there was no time to go home and change. Besides, he didn't have anything better to wear. When Abe got to town, he found a crowd gathering. In the past, he had enjoyed standing on a tree stump or a fence to talk to other farmers. But this was more than just a chat among friends. Abe's audience had come to hear him speak about their dreams for the future. They were hoping he could put into words the feelings and ideas they couldn't quite say for themselves. Abe's speech was about the river and how important it was to their lives. The river provided water, of course, and also power to run the grist and sawmills. But rivers were also the best way to move goods. The country was growing up fast, Abe explained. They needed to make traveling by river safe and secure. That would help everyone in the long run. When Abe spoke, he didn't shout or make people nervous. He spoke plainly, listing his facts one by one and then weaving them together to make a point. His hands followed the pace of his words, moving in and out of his pockets as he spoke. Abe hated when anyone spoke in a way he couldn't understand, so he made sure he didn't talk too fancy. The mud on his suit was still there, but nobody seemed likely to mention it. People cared more about what Abe said than how he looked. People nodded as he spoke and clapped when he was done. The speech had been a great success. Why? Even the pigs seem to like it. The end. Well, I hope you guys like that book today and have a great day.